Welcome to Coding Codes. Uh, my name is Ian Carroll. I am a software developer during the day, and that's how I make my money. And I spend my money by uh, devoting it to the arts. Um, with me today is an artist as well. Um, uh, let me see if I can give an, intro, an improvised introduction for her. Um, so Maddie Goff is, has been a member of the Sunday Company um, for Groundlings, if I'm remembering that correctly. Uh, also, uh, she is a member of the Impro Theater main company. She also is uh, a member of uh, a improv group called Ripley. Uh, she has numerous different things going on all the time. Uh, she is an actress as well uh, and a writer. Uh, so um, let me introduce her then. Uh, Maddie, uh, go ahead and show yourself. Hello! Hey, Maddie! I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, I'm excited <laughs> to have you. Um, so, uh, yeah. Um, uh, man, you do a lot of stuff. Uh, oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Yep, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Not much to say to that, I guess. Um, so, uh, let me um, say a few things. First of all, um, uh, I have not told you what exactly you're doing, right? I, no, I have no idea what I'm going to do. Okay, uh, cool. I, I took a lot of time to like set up my lights so I could l like look really cool, um, but that's like all, all I did in our pre-show. <laughs> you know, there's a lot to be said for looking real cool, though. Um, uh, and as someone who is still learning software, and I've been doing it for a while, I will never stop. I am always learning, and so should anybody else who is doing this stuff. Um, it, uh, it's, it's important to make yourself feel like you're doing the real thing. Uh, because so, fo so often in the industry of software, like we have this idea called imposter syndrome. Have you ever heard that term before? <laughs> they might use it in the arts, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah it's, uh, it's rampant in software because we, we're expected, we think that we have to know everything from the beginning. And we never do. When you can just be good at Googling, right? Uh, well, I mean, that's a big part of it, yeah. Uh, because after all, um, you know, software engineers built the internet. And when they built the internet, they built all their documentation right there on the internet. So it's all right there for you to, uh, to look at. You can teach yourself that's software you engineering. Say. Yeah. When we we were building, Ian and I both, well, Ian helped me build a computer, and in the near future, when his power supply comes in, I'm gonna help you build a computer. Yep. And we found there was like an issue with my Mac to 10 reboot USB that, man, we Googled the hell out of that, like six to 11 hours we spent on the little tiny like USB. And finally, I found the right Google search and figured out how to do it. And Ian was like, we should make a video of us doing, figuring that out and doing it so that there's just another data point out there for people to come when they're searching for what's going on. They can find us. Yeah, doing exactly. It I thought that was cool. Yeah. 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 Um, and what's really cool about that is that it means that you might think you've never done software development, but you've already done quite a bit. Ooh. Yeah. You, uh, and I would say that this is true about most people, that you go, well, uh, I'm, I'm not being paid to be a software developer. I don't do that. Yeah, you, you, you kind of do. Uh, you need to, uh, to work with things today. Uh, and um, your experiences already are giving you um, an edge on learning software because not only have you built the hardware, so you know exactly the way that your computer is set up, because you built that thing from pieces. Yeah. Yeah, which means that it's you know, I, yeah. I'm not taking it off of my desk. Like, there's no reason it should be up here, but I'm so proud and excited about it. Yeah, you should be. And that's exactly the feeling that you'll, you'll get uh, writing software just as much as writing the hardware. The only difference is that the software um, has more capabilities, uh, mm. and there's more artistry to it than what the hardware is. Um, so yeah, uh, and that's not all. You didn't just build the hardware. You also worked on the system BIOS that were already on the system, 
which is firmware. So there's hardware, then there's firmware, and then there's what we call software. Uh, firmware is just so. Firmware was that the system BIOS? What's firmware? Firmware is just software that's really close to the machine. Um, it's the software that runs the actual hardware. So, for example, okay. if you have um, a um, a hard disk drive that actually has a spinning disk in it, which yours does not, um, uh, the firmware is saying rotate this disk at this rate. Okay. You know. Put the needle down now, now, now. Um, that's basically what it's doing. But the firmware also operates that SSD that you've got, which is basically a big flash drive that's right in your computer, and that's that's what we're doing instead of a hard disk drive now. Um, so that's cool. Um, so you've worked on that. Uh, you've also installed an operating system, which is yes. no small task. No, uh, and in order to do that, you've already used uh, the um, you've already used the command line or the terminal to do that. So you've worked with those systems that most people are really terrified of. So I'm excited to see what happens next. Uh, but before I go into that, um, and you're completely qualified to be a software engineer at this point, <laughs> um, as far as I'm concerned. Um, you know, convincing uh, a company about that, eh. And besides, I'm not sure if you really want to spend all of your time doing that, but my point is that you have the power uh, and you can do this. Um, but before I get into that, let's talk about some of your artistic endeavors that you got going on. Yeah. Uh, so you have a show on this channel. On this channel, it's called The Maddie Goff Show. It's at 8.30 on Thursdays. It's at Pacific Time, 8.30. Sorry for the East Coast folks. The East, I believe, is that direction. No, it's that direction. Um, yeah, it's so much fun. It's basically a two person show mm -hmm. with a seven person backstage crew that just crushes it. Ian, you are often my zoom cutter and OBS operator Ian is an excellent. So we have to have live editing during the show and you're cutting back and forth between the actors. Ian is basically directing the show from behind the show behind the scenes. And it's a huge job. You want an, an improviser who knows story beats and knows where the story should go and also understands silence in a huge way. And so Ian often Zoom cuts my show. I, I, I do love it when Ian is our Zoom cutter. And then I have two musicians, Arlo and Alex, who are often doing it. And they have a show. I think you said that they're off tonight, but yes. they do made up music on Wednesday nights at seven. Yeah, they and do. they are... Yeah. They live score the Maddie Goff show. And the Maddie Goff show is just um, me and another improviser. Ian will guest on my show soon. I can't remember our date. I could look it up right here. We can it's sometime it, but... in October. It's giving me enough time to prepare. So it's cool. Okay, good. Yeah. Well, and you'll pitch it, you'll pitch it when, when the time comes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, on this show. But it it is basically a one person gets to dive into what it's like to be one character all the way through a narrative. and dive into that acting. And then the other person plays all the different characters in their life. And you see it's based on stories like Fleabag, Phoebe Waller-Bridge making Fleabag and Issa Rae making Insecure and Mindy, Ster no, Mindy Sterling is a groundling that I know and love. Mindy Kaling making The Mindy Project. So all of these women making their own shows. <laughs> I just, didn't know what to call mine, so I called it the Maddie Goff Show. And that was like a working title, and now it's stuck. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what this is, the improvised version of that. So it's yeah. a lot of fun. Uh, you're yeah. also um, doing some things with Ripley as well, right? Um, is that what yeah. Heartbeats is? That's exactly what Heartbeats is. It's an improvised medical drama in the style of Grey's Anatomy. And it premieres September 25th on Ripley Improv, um, their Twitch channel which I can post in the chat later, but that's that's what that show is going to be. I'm excited. We all play recurring characters, so you'll get to see the same narrative just continue through all the way through the season. Oh, that's really cool. Um, so that means you have to pretend to know about medical stuff, right? Yeah. And make it up yeah. on the spot. Exactly. You know, it's been my, I, I'm actually, I grew up in, my mother was, is a, well, was, doesn't really do fitness um, training anymore, which I guess she does. She just like from her home, she runs a farm and 
with horses and she does training fitness for people who want to get better at riding their horses at home. So I grew up with her saying all these like big fitnessy words. So I can wrap my face around a good big fitness word. And she, from my lovely sweet mother who, <laughs> who used them at me when I was like five years old with like, no, you know, no, she didn't hold back at all. And so I love, I love improvising medical jargon, but I also realized that not everybody loves that and it's kind of a nightmare. So we actually have some um, on the show, we will have cheat sheets of sorts. They still have to pronounce it. They still have to improvise it, but I'll, I will have made some sheets and the audience will get to pick what's going on with the patient each week. Oh, that's really cool. cool. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Yeah. I'm really excited. We've, we've had a couple run throughs and they've gone so well. It's, I'm very excited for the show. Well, that, that is yeah. great. Um, are you ready to, uh, to get your hands dirty with this? Let's do it. All right, here we go. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna share my screen with you. Mm -hmm. um, as soon as I can figure out the buttons. My show is extremely technically complicated. All I'm doing is streaming my desktop. <laughs> yeah. All right, so here cool. is a blank screen. And soon I am going to put up this. You're seeing that? Wow. Yeah, I'm seeing it. Okay. So I'm going to dive you in real deep, real fast. Yeah, um, no we sense. are... Like I, I see nothing that's showing up. <laughs> right. So uh, that's because I haven't explained it yet. Um, yeah. But, um, oh, I see the word ramen, which is like ramen noodles. Yes. Great. Um, so... Um, what this is, what, I'm gonna, what we're going to be doing is we're going to do some test-driven development, which is something that you don't normally do without first knowing how to code. But mm -hmm. I'm going to put you right into the deep end with this. Because why not? So, yeah. So what I'm going to do is I have this thing. It's called reverse string. Okay. Um, so a string is any word at all that's in quotations. So here's a string. Why is it called a string, you might ask? Oh, oh. Why is it called a string? Oh, well, uh, let me tell you. Uh, the reason it's called a string is because it is a, um, it, it is a, a series of characters. So okay. that is usually letters. And it could be okay. other things, such as spaces or emoji or things like that as well, can also be part okay. of a string. Um, but traditionally, um, the traditional characters are going to be the ones that you see on your keyboard in, uh, on an American keyboard uh, because uh, Americans and British people are the ones who really designed that keyboard. So, and they encoded it that way to begin with. Over time, they've built in lots and lots of other characters from all over the world, but uh, the first set is American English. Um, okay. So uh, that's a string. So reversing a string means we're going to put all the characters that are in one order and put them into the other. So here we have, test an empty string. An empty string has nothing in it. It's just uh -huh. quotation marks. Um, so we're going to have a given, and this is, I'm setting this test up in three stages. There's an arrange step of things that happened beforehand, the actual action, and then we test to see whether or not the action did the thing we expected it to do. Okay. And so this test right here is testing an empty string. So given, an empty string. When we call the reverse function, and that's being imported from here. So we're grabbing a reverse string. So we're going to go to the reverse string, which is right here in reverse string.py. Okay. Um, and then we're going to grab the reverse function from that. So if you look in here, here's the implementation. This is the actual code, not the test. And you'll just see it says reverse, and then there's a bunch of jargon in here that um, I wrote years ago without thinking someone else would want to read this. And I did a poor job, but it works, which means we can use it, even though we don't need to actually understand it or um, work with it on the inside. So we go back to this reverse string, right? So we're going to call this function. This is a function right here. So we're going to define def this function, which, by the way, the language we're using is called Python. Huh? <laughs> um, funnily enough, uh, Python uh, was developed by somebody who was really in love with Monty Python. That's oh. why it's called Python. Comedy. Yeah. 
Uh, so uh, we have this reverse. Uh, now I've, I've called it this. And I've said that it's going to take something called input. And then it's going to do some stuff with the input and then return this, this string on the other end. Okay. All right. But you don't need to know the details of that. You can actually use these tests to see how it works. So we call reverse this, this thing given right here, which I've labeled as given. And then I'm going to assert that it's equal, the actual, and then the empty string. So reversing nothing should give us nothing. OK, uh -huh. cool. If we reverse the word robot next, yeah. it should give us Tobor. Uh -huh. If we reverse ramen with a capital R, it should give us <laughs> Neymar with a capital R at the end. Uh -huh. OK, I'm hungry. Yeah gives you, you know, um, um, how to pronounce uh -huh. that? Yergno m i, uh -huh. which sounds Klingon. Um, uh -huh. OK. And then if you reverse a palindrome, you get the palindrome. Right. And then if you reverse uh, an even-sized word here, the reverse of drawer is reward, interestingly uh -huh. enough. Um, and so we can run these tests this way. So see this Python dash M pi test. And what it's going to uh -huh. do is it's going to take this test. It's going to look for all the tests that are in, in this file right here. Uh, and it's going to run whatever tests those are. And here we can see a bunch of green dots. Each of these is a passed test. Six passed. Oh, nice. So that means this works the way that we expect it to work. Uh, right. I can prove that uh, it does that by saying, like, break me. Um, and then it will. something will fail. It ought to. Yes, good. Nice. nice, OK. And so a lot of this is just about reading. So here we are reversing the string, um, assertion error. Empty string does not equal bang equals. Um, it means does not equal. Um, Break me. OK. Gotcha. So we just put this back. We run it again just to make sure that we got everything all spick and span, which we do. And there we have it. OK. Cool. So what I want to do um, is I want to create a palindrome function that's going to tell me whether or not something is a palindrome. <coughs> So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to grab this stuff right hey, here. Someone in the chat said, what I does this? IDE? Um, yeah. So uh, IDE means an integrated development environment. And that is a fancy way of saying a text editor that's meant for code. Um, that's, this, so he's asking what program you're using right here. Right, that's right. So this is um, uh, VS Code, um, which is fine. I mean, to be honest, I'm not all that picky about which editor I choose. Um, some people are really, really set on one. Um, and you can get really deep into one and just know it in and out. But I prefer to know a little bit about anything because I don't know what uh, the team of people I'm going to be working with is going to be working on. So um, I might choose this, um, or I might choose something else. Uh, Vim is a favorite, um, if you've used Vim or Emacs. Uh, but yes, uh, I'm using VS Code. All right. Hi, so, Corey. Yeah, Corey's in there. Um, all right. So I'm going to use, um, so by the way, this thing down here at the bottom is actually uh -huh. the same thing as that terminal that you were using before. Um, it's okay. just put into the IDE to make it convenient. But I could very easily just pull up my own terminal and use that. In fact, frequently I prefer that. Um, okay. But that's just my, that's just my taste. Um, but in this case, I'm going to use a, t a command called touch. Um, and touch, uh, I'm going to create um, r u uh, pal. Um, and we're going to test.py. So we're going to create a file. We're going to touch. And what this does is it just touches uh, the file system. If the file does not exist, it creates it. If it doesn't, it just touches it and does nothing. And that's it. Okay. In fact, uh, if you've ever heard uh, the song um, uh, Touch 
from Daft Punk. Uh huh. It's actually this. Is it really? Is it based on this? That makes me happy. Um, I'm going to say that it is. <laughs> I'm going to claim that. Now, I could try and write this all myself based off of knowledge. Import unit test, import the things I need, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But why? Why do that when I can just copy and paste? So I'm going to do that. Hey, so I have a question. You just, when you just wrote, patch is the, um, is the, what would you call it, the function that you're doing right now, the command? Are you a pal test? What is that? What is are you a pal? Did you just so, make that up or is that like a... Yes. Standard thing. So a lot of software is actually about naming things. Uh -huh. So I just named it off the top of my head. Not exactly off the top of my head, but pretty close. Um, and I decided that we're going to create a file called Are You a Pal? <laughs> cool. Okay. Um, so I'm going to import unit test to make this a test. Right now it's just going to grab reverse string and import reverse, and I can prove that this is working by just testing the empty string all over again. So now we should see six tests passing, um, as opposed to f uh, five. Uh, no, not quite doing what I expect it to do. I'm wondering why. Oh, maybe I need to save it. That's the IDE giving me a trouble. Here we are. Are you a pal test? One test passing. Right. OK. So I now know that the test framework works, and it does what I expect it to do. Now let's go ahead and start doing some test-driven development. So we're going to, instead of do, going for reverse string, we're going to go for R U A pal. Um, and we're going to import the, um, uh, we could call it R U a pal if we wanted to. Um, reverse string just has reverse. Um, uh, so what do you think a good name for this function is going to be that's going to ask us, uh, that, that's going to tell us whether something is a palindrome? Oh, OK. Um, let's just call it, for the hell of it, Hopeful Panda. Hopeful Panda. Um, that, yeah. Now, that's, that, <laughs> that's cool. And you can name it that. Um, however, later on, you're going to be like, what the heck is Hopeful Panda supposed to do? <laughs> yeah, right, 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 right. So maybe, so, so so maybe not, not so whimsical. OK, so maybe something like, wait, we're testing the palindrome, right? Yeah. OK, so maybe like, maybe like backwards panda. <laughs> maybe like palindrome. Palindrome. Test. Yeah, OK. Um, Palindrome panda. How about something like, it's a palindrome? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Is that supposed to be underscore? Or is oh, underscore? yeah, good, good, good catch. <laughs> nice. See? OK, so much of software development is just about catching those little details. Um, all right, so we've got, it's a palindrome. Are you a pal? Uh, and we don't, so this thing, instead of returning a string, it's going to return something called a Boolean. Oh, say it again. It cut out. A, a Boolean. A Boolean. A Boolean. Yes. Like a um, like an underwater warrior. Um, <laughs> it's an underwater warrior. Yes. Um, so a Boolean is another kind of data type besides a string. Um, okay. And it has two values. It can either be true or it can be false. That's it. Mm. That's what a Boolean is. Just like love. Just like love. So what do you think? Is an empty string a palindrome? Is nothing a palindrome? This is a big Ooh. philosophical question. Yeah. yeah. Yes, it is. OK. I think so. I think it is. OK. So we're going to say that it's a palindrome. We're going to assert that it is that the actual, when we call it's a palindrome with the given, which is going to be an empty string, it's going to return true, right? Yeah. Right. Well, and. And now, are we just tra checking like the moral philosophy of the computer at this point? <laughs> a bit. I mean, uh, you did have to decide, what's this function going to do when we give it nothing? Yeah. Now, we could have done some other things. We could have done error handling and had throw an error, say like, I, I don't know what to do about that. Or we could have it give us a string that says like a suffusion of yellow or something that's completely unhelpful to anybody. Or yeah. we could say, no. You know, an empty string is not a palindrome. Nothing is not a palindrome. Otherwise, 
everything that is not a string is also a palindrome, which may also be true. Um, so. <laughs> Uh, it's about to spiral, y'all. <laughs> yeah, so you can see you can you can see how 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 this can go, but in any case, we've decided that for our purposes, we're going to code this thing so that when we give it an empty string, it's going to tell us, yep, that's a palindrome, uh, because it's the same forwards and backwards, right? Yeah. Okay. And that's we're just, we're just declaring that to be true. Yes. So I'm going to run the test now. What do you think is going to happen? I think it's going to win. I think it's going to be like, you win, you pass. OK, let's find out. What? It shouldn't have done that. Hold on. <laughs> that was my evil laugh. There it there is. There you go. There you go. Now we get this big, angry error right here. Error collecting are you a pal test dot pi. Let's read what this says. Import error. While importing test module, blah, 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 blah. Hint, make sure your test module packages have valid Python names. Um, Okay. Um, <laughs> Wait, was that, like a, that, was that like a dagger at me? Was it listening to me wanting to call it Panda? Come on, computer? So, um, module not found error. No module named are you a pal. Oh. Wait, we just so wrote we the didn't... test. We didn't actually write yeah. are you a pal. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, we got to do that, right? Um, so let's go ahead and create that. Let's touch something else. And it's going to say, oh, and it's you. Yeah, good, it's, good call. That'll just be my job. It's going to say, you're just looking. OK, so what did you just do there? You just went and. I just created the file. And that's it. Let's see what happens right. when we do it now. The see if touch we get. Thing either touches it or it creates it. Yeah, so now we have this empty file called areyoapal.py. <laughs> Hmm. Oh. Hold on. Now it's saying cannot import name. It's a palindrome from are you a pal. That's interesting, right? So it knows that it's there. It knows the file is there. But now it's not saying, I don't know what it's a palindrome is. What's an it's a palindrome? Well, we got to write it, right? Right. So let's I mean, go that ahead. was the name that we chose over the panda names. <laughs> Oh, trash panda. Um, I think you're 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 still upset that I didn't choose panda. <laughs> I, I am, but I get I get the logical reasoning why you didn't choose it, and I respect it. However, um, we can do uh, panda pal. How about that? Oh, that's fun, panda pal. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Okay. But wait, does that make sense? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. We're gonna be and, mad at ourselves later. Yeah. OK, so now it says, I don't know what an, an, uh, what's a panda pal. Uh, OK, so let's see. We have to go write it now, huh? Yeah, we do. Split left. Let's do that. Let's move this over a bit. Let's move ourselves down just a touch so that we can see what we need to see. All right, so here's our test. And here's our code. So it's saying, oh, what what the heck is up? It, and first of all, it's still looking for. It's panda. still looking for the old name. I mean, I really appreciate you going with the panda thing. I think we're going to regret it later. Yeah, we will, future. but that's okay. Future future us is going to hate us for it, but for now, it's really cute. <laughs> um, all right, so we need to we need to create the function, right? OK, so in Python, we create a function by saying def. And then we're Fine. going to call it panda pal. Find panda palindrome. Yes. Uh, and we're going to include a uh, uh, OK. So all right, well, let's just do, start with this, huh? And just to make sure that this works, we're just going to call pass on it. So it's just going to do nothing. Uh, let's see how that goes. Pass, does the pass tells it to do nothing. Yeah. All right. Syntax error. Invalid syntax. Let's see what this so says. I have a question here. Yeah. How do you know 
So we get this like big chunk of red. It's like really upset. How do you know which part of the upset bits to look at for your answers? You have to be zen like, about this. Yeah, I, I, I feel it. It's really great at me and I am a little bit triggered by it. Yes. What um, do you think this uh, code, uh, the idea is no news is good news. So if it doesn't say anything, you did things right. It only tells you things when something goes wrong. Uh, mm -hmm. And when it does, it's going to give you basically this big stack trace of whatever the error is. Um, usually what I do is I look at the top and the bottom, or I look for something that seems familiar, but I will actually read through it. In this case, it okay. says def panda pal syntax error invalid syntax. It's because I failed to put a colon here which you need to, I believe, oh. uh, much like this does. And because I didn't have a colon, it, it went like, hey, that's not, that's, that's not Python. Let's well, try it's, it again. It's, it's, a little, it's a little like particular. Now it says something different. Um, oh, wait, I didn't save it. It says the same thing. Oh, it, it didn't realize you changed it. Yeah, there we go. So now it says something. Panda pal takes zero positional arguments, but was given one. What's a positional argument? Well, it was given you definitely one. Wanna... Do you want me to tell you what a positional argument is? Yes. Um, it is ugh, well. I, honestly, if I was, if I was, um, let me let me pick the second thing that comes to my brain because the first thing is not safe for television. <laughs> or, um, it is when you decide to take up a position on a um, on a argument, and then you suddenly are arguing with yourself. Um, now you're alone when you're arguing with yourself. So yes, you are losing your mind. But two, you are getting multiple sides of, of an argument, whereas a lot of people just see myopically. So you're also really intelligent. Hmm. That's an interesting That's like way of putting it. So it's, so you're arguing with yourself. You're giving yourself an argument, and then you have mm -hmm. to respond to that argument, right? And, and you're alone. It's important that you're in your home alone when this okay. is happening. Well, uh, our panda pal is all by itself when it's called this way. And it is given a positional argument, which in this case is called given. Mm -hmm. Now, given is going to evaluate to an empty string. So we're giving it an empty string, but panda pal doesn't actually take any strings. So we need to give it something. So that's called a parameter or an argument. Mm -hmm. And you can have as many of those as you like. Um, <laughs> see no evil cast says, I am a positional argument. Very nice. Um, yeah, you are. <laughs> uh, so um, yes, we need to give this, we need to follow the interface that we supplied earlier, which is that we call it and we give it something. Right now, it's just taking it, no matter what, right? So, uh -huh. uh, I've got some of my hair in my mouth. I hate when that happens. Anyway. Sorry, my life, man. <laughs> yeah. Hair ties? Do you use hair ties right now? Oh, yeah, yeah, I do. Um, hair to use hair. You do. Um, uh, what, kind of, what kind of buns can you create? Oh, uh, I bet some very strange ones now, because my hair is extra, extra long. I don't uh -huh. normally... I haven't really experimented too much, except that like sometimes in order to sleep, I need to tie it up like in a top knot, mm -hmm. just to get yeah. it out of my face. I don't see anything wrong with a man bun. Now people are welcome to argue with that. Take a positional argument in your home alone, because I don't care. I don't see anything wrong with them. A couple of my friends right now have man buns, pandemic, but I'm like, you're rocking them. So. Well, you know, I don't rock them on the screen. I just rock them when I'm completely by myself. With, and that is my positional argument for myself. Are you in a positional argument when you're rocking a man bun? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, we need to give this thing an argument. Um, and okay. we need to name what that thing is. So what's it going to be called? What does panda pal actually take? Um, like, what, it, what are we going to name this argument? Yeah, where are we going to name the argument? Um, I think we should say it should be fight. <laughs> so. We are going to be so, so unable to read this code when we're done. <laughs> All right, so we're going to take, it's going to take a fight, right? <laughs> so the panda pal takes a fight. Uh, now it's saying something new. Now it's saying that none does not equal true. 
Apparently, when we pass pass, it returns none. In fact, I can prove that by writing none right now and see the exact same error. OK, none equals true. What's the simplest way to get this test to pass? Dumbest possible way. Um, to, put n to, to tell it nothing is nothing or something like, like do a real simple, do a real simple thing. Well, remember that we want it to say true, right? Oh, true. Then say true. True is true. Mm hmm You're true. Let's see what that did. Oh, God. Velocity. Wait, what? Stop. Come on. Actually, save oh. for crying out loud, VS Code. That saving thing. This is the v VID. What is this VS? This is the VS Code system. Positional argument, definitely not ready for prime time. Thank you, um, Evelyn Don Dother, because she gets it. He, she, they get it. OK. Maybe I need to return. Maybe that's the problem. I'm not returning anything. It's just saying true and then throwing it away. It's not returning true. So I need to write return. Let's see if that does it. Oh, OK. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, Woo! there we are. OK, so we have our first passing test. Now this thing will simply always tell you. So now if we ask it anything at all, give it anything, it's going to tell us, yeah, that's a palindrome. Yeah, that's a palindrome. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. OK, so we got to give it a new test. OK. It was a real agreeable one. Yeah. All right. Plain drum, pal, and drum. Yeah. Okay. So what's what's going to be what's a word that's not a palindrome or just any string at all? Okay. Um, how about? Um, Here's where you can uh, be really creative. Oh, I was like, I like the word that just came out of my mouth was I think it was creative. Cohen. Cohen. Okay. Yeah. Let's keep this underscore for now, or all. Okay. So we should expect that Cohen is going to be false. False. Now, this is where things are going to get a little complicated. False, right. True does not equal false uh, when right. we're testing not a palindrome. OK, so we have this fight, right? How do we know that something is, so, so let's, let's think this through a little bit. How do we know that something is a palindrome? How do we know that a string is a palindrome? Yeah. How would we know it's a palindrome? You can read it both ways, and True. it's the same. So if we yeah. reverse it, it should be it's no different. Cool. Yeah. OK, great. So you tell it to reverse. Right. So that means and that, that it return the same word. So that means that we can crib off of our old thing by going back and looking at the other test. And now we can take this line right here and bring this into our code from reverse string import reverse. I see. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to do this. We're going to reverse. So, um, uh, so we have a fight, and now we have another thing. Um, we're going to call it reverse fight for now, uh, and then we might change that later. Yeah, what do y'all think is a reverse fight, chat? So look, somebody's like, want to become famous by followers, prime reviews on good followers. Oh, yeah, that thing yeah. needs to die. Don't worry about that. Um, actually, I wonder, um, we need a mod in here to get rid of that thing. That's I'm the first mod. time I've I actually needed a mod. Yeah, boy, that feels pretty good, though, right? Yeah. Like, I'm like, thanks, Greasel Weed and Zay Heaven Metal. I don't know, I just <laughs> surrender. Yeah, get rid of those things. Anyway, uh, that's, um, we don't need to talk too much about that. We're busy coding. Um, so we're going to reverse the fight. And reverse the fight. So now it's still just going to return true. But what do we really want to know? We want to know if fight is the same as reverse fight, right? Yeah? Yeah, yeah because that means it's a palindrome. OK. Right? Is that right? Is that what we're doing? Mm -hmm. Yep. 
See, you're, you're just, it's. So we're going to return does fight equal equal reverse fight. Now equal equal as opposed to equal. Yeah. So equal is an assignment operator. What that's going to do is it's going to take whatever the value of reverse fight is and it's going to assign it to this thing, which we've also called reverse fight. Mm -hmm. And then, so in fact, let's refactor this a little bit. I mean, we're now talking about two different fighters, right? Yeah, Okay. reverse cool. fight. So, uh, so what's our first fighter's name? Oh, fun. Um, let's call him, uh, or you know what? Let's be, let's like break gender conformity and let's call, let's make it a her and let's call her Tanya. Tanya. Okay. So Panda Pal takes a Tanya and, <laughs> um, and we're going to, we're going to have Tanya fight reverse Tanya. Right? Yeah. Um, Which is? Um, oh, well, I guess we could call it Yan. Uh, Yanot. On the A and the Y would switch, right? Yeah. I, on. I not. I not. Or um, we could call it the Anti Tanya. Or we can call oh, it. I like that, Ian. I like the Anti Tanya. That's really fun. Okay. Yeah, that's really fun. So, Boy. <laughs> is Tanya the same as Auntie Tanya? <laughs> I'm gonna cry. Okay, All right. That's what so we're if <laughs> so, if Tanya is the same as Auntie Tanya, then we know that Panda Pal is gonna say thumbs up. Otherwise, if Auntie Tanya is not the same as Tanya, it's going to say, nope, ain't no palindrome. So let's see if that worked. Uh, oh, yeah, by the way, uh, this is an assignment. So we're assigning Auntie Tanya. Oh, yeah. So Tanya exists. And as soon as Tanya exists, what we're going to do is we're going to call reverse Tanya, and we're going to assign that to Auntie Tanya. And then okay. we're just going to say, is Tanya the same as Auntie Tanya? Equal, equal. So. That's like a computer programming thing that equal is different from equal, equal. Some okay. programming languages also have an equal, equal, equal. Um, that's only because those languages um, uh, get really fuzzy about what, what makes something the same as something else. So I have a question. Why? So return just means give us back if the, the right. answer to this. Otherwise, you, it just runs the code and it just goes into oblivion. Okay, gotcha. Now, sometimes you want that. Sometimes it's like, write it to a database and don't tell me about it. I don't care. Um, but that's called a side effect in software. Uh, and you want to minimize the amount of side effects you have. So when you return something, you want, like, in this case, PandaPal, we want that to return true or false. Tell us. Don't just yeah. run the code. So we say return. So um, the anatomy of a function is that we have, we define it, we give it a name, we give it any arguments that it has, usually inside of parentheses, depends on the language, and then it's going to return something. Sometimes it returns nothing. Um, and if we did that, it would return nothing. Mm -hmm. It would run the code and return nothing. Right. Gotcha. Um, so, uh, and then when we call it, when we call the function that we have defined to actually run the code, we're going to say, um, in this case, uh, panda pal uh, given, right? Panda pal given for Cohen here. So, <laughs> Sarah Sunday says not all equals are equal. Yes, thank you, computer programming, for making that confusing. <laughs> all right, so we're going to run this code and see if Tanya is equal to anti Tanya uh, okay. for a Cohen. Look at that, it works. Okay, wow. if that's true, let's see what happens if we test it with a palindrome. Okay. Oh yeah, because d the panda pal is looking for a non-palindrome, right? Yeah. I got you. All right. That's, okay. That's so, we're going to give it something. Um, let's give it a palindrome. What does self, self mean? Why is self in there a couple ah. times? 
Um, so self, uh, it, so we haven't really covered this yet. Um, okay. But I will tell you very briefly what 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 self is referring to. So. Um, with Python and a lot of languages, we're running this thing as if it's functional. That is, we're just defining functions and running those functions because we don't care about anything else. Now, there's a thing that you can there's a thing that you can create in in software called an object, and you create objects by having a class, and the class constructs an object, and the object knows things about itself. For example, uh, there might be a Matty class, um, and the Matty class um, will construct Matties. So, um, and so we can have different Matties that it constructs. We can have a Matty that says like hair color green, for example. And so well, if we create the green colored Matty, then it does that. And then if we want to create another Matty with red hair, we can do that by giving it Matty and then passing red, for example. And now we have a red haired Matty as well. So, and then we can have those two um, as we need them, um, if we want to change one, like let's say that the green-haired one wants to be silver-haired now, we can change it to a silver-haired Matty, and now we have a silver-haired Matty, and the red-haired one has not been affected, because it's a totally different Matty. Um, so self refers to um, the concept that the class has of itself, as far as, so we're passing a function itself. I barely get that. Yes, uh, because we haven't really covered it. And um, it's like saying yeah. not red hair Maddie, not silver hair Maddie, self. Yes. Yeah, I get that. I'm on board. I'm on board with this. Yeah. So let's give it a palindrome uh, in the meantime, though. So for okay. testing a palindrome. Um, how about the name Hannah? OK. That's Hannah with an H at the end? Yes, which just happens to be my name on uh, heartbeats. Oh, very cool. And then we're going to call it with panda pal. Okay, so you're saying test pound from actual so, panda. So we're going to given this, the actual thing is going to be assigned to actual, and it's just going to be calling this. And then we're going to self dot assert equal. I see actual. And in this case, we want it to be true, right? Because uh -huh. that is a palindrome. Let's see if we did it right. Da, 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 da. There we are. Ah. And there we have it, the basis of a palindrome. Now, this is test-driven development right here. We wrote the test first, and then we started testing through it to make sure it did the right thing. Uh, but we don't try and write the software first. We do the simplest thing possible. Um, and this just about is. We can actually, uh, you know, if we wanted to simplify this further, we could do this. And this is refactoring. We don't even need to assign an anti Tanya. I see. Yeah. Give us that Tanya is equal to the reverse of Tanya. Yep. And we still get the right answer. Cool. Um, but there are benefits to having an anti Tanya. Um, or. Well, it's pretty yeah, so I'm going to put Auntie Tanya back simply because I like that. And <laughs> we can uh, run the test to make sure we didn't break anything in the meantime, which we didn't. Uh, that proves it. Um, so uh, that's pretty much a palindrome. Now, if we wanted to get a little fancier, we can actually do something like this. Um, what if Hanya has a capital H? Ooh, okay. I have a feeling it's going gonna, it's gonna to tell us you're wrong. Yep. So, so in order to do back. that, we need to somehow lower case. Yeah, okay. do we need to tell it, hey, if there's an upper case, just chill out, make, pretend it's lower. Yeah, so in order to do that, we can maybe take Tanya and lowercase Tanya. Okay. So, 
we might say um, chill, Tanya. Yeah, chill is equal to all lowercase. But we don't know what that, how to do that yet. We just need to chill, Tanya. And we need to return chill, Tanya versus anti Tanya. And it needs to know that's not a palindrome. Right, so currently that did nothing. Uh -huh. But we've set it up so that we can make the easy change. We made the change easy. Now we're going to make an easy change. So in order to do that, uh, what we'll need to do is we'll need to Google the answer to this. Let's see if I can bring up. Can I bring up? Uh, wow. Okay. 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 So let's just do that real quick. All right. Um, you can see what I've been googling. Um, Python. Um, Python 3, um, make string all lower case. Uh, okay, it looks like we can just call the lower oh. function on it. Interesting, cool. Um, can you use that? I like Stack Overflow personally. Uh, Stack Overflow usually has good answers. Okay. S dot lower. Okay, so we're just going to call dot lower at the end of it. And that's that should work. So if that's true, then Tanya dot lower would do it. Should do the trick. Now, is there supposed to be a parentheses there? Yes. And you know why? So no. um, here's an interesting thing about Tanya. Tanya is referring to Hannah in this case. Okay, so Tanya is actually Hannah in disguise. All right? Yes. Um, so, um, what the thing is that a string in Python is actually an object, it's not just a string. And that yeah. object has state, which is why I said like there are a couple of different Maddies one with green hair, one with blue. So, a class. There, yeah, so there's a class called string, and a string can have any number of characters on the inside of it. One, a billion, it doesn't matter. You know, the entire complete works of William Shakespeare in a string, sure, it'll be fine with that. Um, uh, but the, and, and so each time that you do this and you define a string in Python, it's going to, behind the scenes, create a class. It's going to say to the class, hey class, can you make me a new string object? I want it to have these characters in it. And the string class, class says, coming right up, here you go. But classes, what? Oh, I just, it just, it was very kind, coming right up, here you go. Yeah, that's what it does. Um, yeah. But um, it doesn't just simply deliver the thing, because that would be kind of useless. What a, what a class also has are things called methods. And methods are simply functions that live inside of the class, that are built into the class. Which means that when I call Tanya over here, Tanya doesn't just come with a string. She comes with a whole bunch of other things that come along with that, including... Tanya's got baggage. We know this. Tan Tanya comes with a, 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 a method, which is just a function, a function of her own called dot lower. And it's one of a dozen or so different uh, things that Tanya can do that we're not asking her to do right now because we don't need her to do those things. So she can chill. No. But we do need her to do one thing, lower yourself. And she does. Mm -hmm. All lowercase Tanya, thanks girl. And that's it. So yeah, we talked a little bit about classes doing that too. Um, okay, and that pretty much does the trick. Now, we could go further with this. Like what happens when we put in a comma in there? Like, have you ever heard, um, um, I'm going to stop sharing now. Have you ever heard the song um, uh, from Weird Al called Bob? I probably have. My brother was a huge Weird Al fan, and I listened. So in Weird Al, uh, in Bob, he's basically doing a Bob Dylan uh, cover, as if it's a Bob yeah. Dylan song. But every single um, lyric is a palindrome. Oh, wow. And it's like, if I have a hi-fi, um, and like, madam, I'm Adam, too hot to hoot, um, et cetera, et cetera. So like, those things, like each one is a palindrome, the whole thing. Yeah. 
So um, how would we make sure that you know, uh, PandaPal can handle Weird Al Yankovic's lyrics and be able to say, yeah, that's, that's still a palindrome? Well, we would have to tell PandaPal that it's broken into chunks, right? Yeah, we'd probably okay. have to pass it individual lyrics one at a time. Okay, okay, great. Yeah. And would we have to tell it that the spaces are something? Like yeah, we would have to. The... So we would have to. So each of those lyrics would actually be Tanya in disguise. Um, uh huh. And yep. then we would have to tell Tanya, hey, Tanya, I need you to get rid of all the spaces. And if there's any punctuation, Tanya, mm -hmm. don't worry about it. Yeah, I want you to get rid of the punctuation too. Now, Power. go ahead and uh, check out the difference between chill Tanya and anti Tanya. Yeah. Um, so you would do it that way. Um, but you would do it by first writing the test, using something that you know is not going to work, watching it fail, writing just yeah. enough code to get it to pass, and then after you're done, you can start to modify it as you like. You can be like, you know what? I don't really like the name Tanya. Um, it's going to be named Dweezel from now on or um, whatever. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, the point is that the code, the test, will prove that the thing still works. And then you yeah. can take your PandaPal and use it in something else and know that when you use it in something else, if something's broken, it ain't PandaPal. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Because you always got those tests you can run. Just like yeah. reverse string has tests that you can run. I, w I just learned some coding, guys. You did. How's it feel doing your first bit of coding? I mean, honestly, honestly, it feels like um, my brain is like kind of like a puddle right behind my eyelids. OK, that's normal. If I tipped over, it would kind of just like stream out. And have you ever seen someone cry gray matter? Or uh, I'm, I'm imagining it's like having a lot of mascara on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's not unlike that. I would look like I just I just cried mascara. Um, so that's how it feels a little bit. Mm -hmm. But you know what I really like is w one of those learning styles of like going. Okay. Yeah. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. And then you know asking questions later. Yeah. Um, you. You can learn by doing and by breaking things and seeing how they break. Uh, yes. That and works. this code that you wrote, um, it's your code. I mean, I, I would not write a function called PandaPal. I would not have <laughs> uh, PandaPal take a Tanya, create an anti Tanya for her to fight, <laughs> and then determine whether or not it's true by whether or not they, they, they end up being equally matched. <laughs> I mean, that's why I think that maybe I would be excited to name things a little too much. And I think that excitement of naming things might cause a lot of problems in my coding career. Um, you know, you, you learn how to do it, especially after you encounter your code like six months later. And you go, yeah. oh, hold on a second here. Uh, tell me, can you tell me this? What mm -hmm. would you, like, in a, like, no caffeine in your brain. Well, not no caffeine, but like the right amount of chill. What would you have named all of this? Hmm. I kind of like Are You a Pal just because it's already a Are little bit whimsical. Pal? But then if I do one whimsical name, I want to follow it up by making something that's very clearly what this thing is actually doing. So I might do <laughs> Are You a Pal? Is it a palindrome? And so I would, you know, from Are You a Pal, import Is it a palindrome? And then Great. when I say, is it a palindrome, it'll return true or false. Yeah, that's a palindrome. No, it's not a palindrome. I might it's even go, yeah. And if I want to be more whimsical, I might create another function later on that just takes that one and then goes, is it a palindrome? And then return a string and says, yeah, buddy, this is a palindrome. Or, no, dude, that ain't no palindrome. Fine. Um, okay. And that would be how I would do it. I would separate out the logic from the presentation. Yeah, so yours has logic, and there you can have whims, whimsy within logic. You, 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 you separate out your whimsy from your logic. And yeah. the, uh, that's, that's actually a very advanced software concept. It's called the single responsibility principle. Ooh, what does that mean? It means that any piece of code should only do one job, and that's it. Oh, that so, makes a lot of sense. Um, if PandaPal 
um, takes a Tanya and then also says, yeah, buddy, that's a palindrome, it's doing too much. Because um, what I need, because uh, sometimes I'll need to know, is this a palindrome, yes or no? Other times I'll want it to tell me this way. But what if I wanted to tell it something differently? What if I wanted to uh, give it to me in Klingon instead of in English? Um, I need to rewrite the whole thing? No, I shouldn't need to do that. I shouldn't need to care about that stuff. I should just care about the strings, just change the strings, and that's it. Gotcha. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> Sarah Sunday says, SRP, SRP, SRP. Um, yeah, single responsibility principle. It's the first mm. of the solid principles of software engineering. Nice. The, the other ones being the open close principle, Liskov substitution. Um, uh, uh, shoot, there's, there's um, Liskov substitution. I is, I is. Uh, about interface strategy. segregation principle, yeah, um, and then D is, uh, it's not as, oh man. You're, it's like a race against the chat at this point. It really is, some... yeah. Um, e. <laughs> uh, any case, you know, Evil Cast says, coding Cohen, separating whimsy from logic since 2020. <laughs> nice. Nice. So, yep. yeah, I mean, Software engineering is it, like, okay, the key thing about software engineering is you just Google things when you need to know what to do, but um, it's up to you and your brain how you go and what you do. And you use the test to decide, this thing needs to do this and this and this, not that. I want something else for that. We name it something else. And by naming things a certain way, it tells you what it actually is. Dependency inversion. Thank you, Sarah Sunday. Uh, and she cheated. She Googled it too. <laughs> I mean, uh, but honestly, I feel like if I've learned anything, Googling is not cheating, Sarah Sunday. It's using your resources wisely. That's exactly it, yeah. Uh, it's not a race. Um, not too much of a race in any case. It's more important. You, uh, uh, another com common software principle is you um, go slow to go fast. So take your time. Yeah. Observe what's actually in front of you. Read what the error message is. Read the whole thing until you get to the point where it's like, oh, I understand exactly what's going on here. There are so many times where I just like, get the error message and I'm like, oh, what? I know what this is, and I'm, I don't. My meat brain up here has decided what I'm seeing instead of having my eyes tell my brain what is actually in front of me. Um, so, yeah, watch out for that one. Yeah. But, I mean, you already are doing that. You do that when you built your computer. You did that when you installed your operating system. Um, and if you need to go in and change the code, um, assuming the person who wrote the code wrote it in any way that's useful, which is, <laughs> unfortunately, there's a lot of bad software out there um, because really uh, software e engineering needs more a storyteller's eye than it does a mathematician's eye. Interesting. Yeah, math is use you can you can solve a problem once and then just use it forever. But being able to describe what each thing does and have them be able to be pluggable and differently configured um, and only ever do things a single time uh, to create less bugs, to avoid confusion, because this gets really confusing very fast. <laughs> um, Imagine. Yeah, um, naming things is the key to software engineering, as far as I'm so, concerned. So would you say like the main part of software engineering, naming, naming things, um, I maybe got a pretty big fail on? Um, no, because you'll, you'll know. Um, so let, let me just describe to you what you just created so that you can see what I mean. There is a, 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 a bizarre logic to it, but it works. All right. Okay. So I want to know whether something is a palindrome. So I'm going to take the thing and say, is it a palindrome? Um, and I'm going to say, hey, Panda Pal, can you tell me if this is a palindrome? And Panda Pal is going to say, okay, please give me your Tanya. So you give it um, your, the thing that you want it to tell it, whether or not it's a palindrome, by giving it a Tanya. It's going to take Tanya. It's going to chill Tanya out by lowering her down. Then it's going yeah. to create an anti-Tanya, which is the reverse of t chill Tanya. And then, she, and then Panda Pal is going to return whether or not chill Tanya is exactly the same as anti-Tanya. Uh-huh. Which actually is pretty much exactly what you would describe that anyway. I could call it different names if I wanted to, um, but 
oddly enough, as far as the story goes, um, it's pretty compelling. Yeah, I think <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like I a Highlander tale, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Like, are they equally matched? No! Okay. And I'm it's not. not... I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The key thing is, are they in balance, right? Right. So we could have I assigned... We could we could have assigned uh, you know chill Tanya equals anti Tanya as um, the balance, and then return uh -huh. the balance, uh, the balance of Tanyas. That's, I mean, I kind of like the whimsical names best because it really makes it. We cr we created our own language in a way, mm -hmm. um, but I also realize like that language has a half life of a very um, a very short half-life in our brains and you know future maddie and future ian will come back to this and go what what did we want Why? or maybe we'll be delighted we don't know i've never actually uh, had someone uh, really do code this way uh, okay. which by wow. the way there are so many different ways to write code and they're all fine uh so long as you subscribe to the single responsibility principle it doesn't really matter um, and as long as it makes sense in some way you can be like yeah i can wrap my head around this that's all that matters. So, you know, self-expression is part of code as well. It feels very zen. It is. Uh, that's why I call it coding Cohen's. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, for the audience, somebody who doesn't know about uh, what a Cohen is, a Cohen is a spiritual riddle, um, uh, usually in Zen um, Buddhism, where uh, you have a question like, what is the sound of one hand? Or um, if a tree falls in a forest and no one hears it, does it make a sound? Um, you might hear questions like that, uh, and they're designed to make you come to a spiritual realization, um, not just to answer yes or no. Um, uh, unlike our code, which actually does just answer yes or no, but weirdly enough, understanding the code, grokking it, really, like, I know what's going on here, that, that is a Cohen. And it's more about you exploring yourself than it is about the software in particular. Because you're only ever experiencing yourself when you look at that stuff. And it's a reflection of you in, as well. And yours is delightful. It's got a panda. That there's a Tanya. <laughs> there's, <laughs> yeah. There's a little bit of like fire in there with the anti-Tanya. Mm -hmm. I like it. Yeah, approved. Yeah. Strong approval. Cool. Well, I'm going to commit that code to GitHub. Um, and uh, if anyone wants to look at this code and modify it or do anything with it, uh, you can. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, it's going to be there along with everything else. Uh, part of it is also sharing the code. Um, so let me talk a little bit. Uh, let's get get through some of these um, some of these basics going on here. Um, I haven't mentioned that we need to that that if you'd like to, you can subscribe to the channel. Um, yeah. In fact, I saw somebody here who hasn't seen this um, I've before. I subscribed for a couple months in a row, which I didn't realize you could do like an um, ongoing subscription, and that, that, I thought that was rad. I'm going to gift somebody a sub. Oh, sweet. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do right now. Yeah, it's happening. Oh, that's so oh there we go. Yay. <laughs> Tech64. Yep. Yeah, thank you. my Tech64. Yeah, thank you for, uh, for tuning in. Um, and uh, thanks, everybody else, um, uh, for, uh, for coming to Coding Cohen's. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. So, um, people I need to thank. Uh, my production liaison is Matt Pittner. Uh, designer is Aaron Harvey. Uh, he has a show called Infinite Trek uh, that's on on Saturdays. Um, my marketer is Lucy, Lucas Vanasik. Uh, he's on Two Liars tomorrow at 7 p.m., which I I'm believe... I'm on the show tomorrow with him. You are on, too, because Ripley is facing the beards on Two Liars. Um, and that's the next show that's coming up on this channel. Uh, it's going to be tomorrow, and basically uh, we're going to see... Um, sometimes uh, Maddie is telling the truth, and other times she's just pulling stuff out of thin air. Um, and so um, uh, we're going to, there's, there's a whole game show around it. It's great. It's so much fun. Um, uh, besides that, um, there's also um, Cody Bushy. He's my bot master. Um, and he has a show called An Actor Unprepared, which is on Mondays. 
uh, where he gives someone, he gives, he has a director and an actor and a writer, and he puts them all together and they create a thing um, right there on the spot, uh, which is really cool. Um, made up music is usually next, uh, and that's where uh, you get our music that we have for the show, which I just realized I forgot to actually oh, put yeah, in the music you know, because that was gonna be my job. Oh, we were so we were so busy. Uh, Wait, I'll play it right now and put it. Hang on, I'll put it on low. Okay. Just so we have, so just so we go out with it. Can you hear it? It's a lower song. Now it's in the volume. There we go. Working? Yes. Uh, they might be hearing it duplicated, but. Oh no! Now it's. Yeah, it's in there. Um, so, actually, let's turn that up just a bit. So you can find made-up music on Spotify, interestingly enough. Um, and uh, so, uh, yeah, they're normally next. Uh, they're not going to be next today. Uh, they're taking a break. Uh, so uh, they'll be back next Wednesday. Uh, and I'll be back as well. Maddie, thank you so much for coming on my show. This is so fun. Yes. Thank you for having me, Ian. This oh. is great. Yeah, it's, it, it's awesome. Okay, um, so uh, that's gonna be it. Uh, I'm just gonna stop it. There we go, stopping it. I'm gonna dance like my mom.